Okay, now I've done quite a lot of degreasing, soaking, and uh, cleaning, and scraping, and, and uh, chiseling, and everything else. And uh, I've blown out these cracks with, with air. Be sure that I have no dirt lingering between the uh, wood surfaces, because that'll just one little grain of dirt can inhibit that from having a good tight bond. Now, I'm not one thing I'm not going to do is deal with the I'm not going to deal with these cross grain uh, cracks in this particular procedure. I'm simply going to I'm simply going to secure the longitudinal cracks that go through the grain uh, down the length of the grain. Those are the easiest ones to uh, secure and by doing that I have a solid surface to work with then I can then I can bend that into position and splint it in, that, in these cross grain cracks uh, I should say these are more than cracks these are these are breaks but I can secure those cross grain breaks after I've secured the longitudinal cracks that run through all the way through the uh, front and rear of the action so we're going to do that with carpenter's glue I'm going to try to uh, splay this as gently as I can uh, work the glue down inside those uh, cracks and uh, then I'm going to use uh, vinyl electrical tape. Now vinyl electrical tape has a good stretch to it and that provides an extremely good uh, means of clamping uh, wood surfaces together because it will provide, as I wrap that around, it will provide a good solid but uh, a flexible clamping. Clamping it with a mechanical clamp uh, does something sometimes which you don't want to do. Sometimes it can over it can overstress the uh, glue joint, uh, starve it. In other words, all the glue just simply disappears, and then you have a weak joint. With the uh, tape, the tape will basically allow it to squeeze gently as if it was being squeezed by a hand until the, until the glue dries without being too aggressive. So I've got to examine that very carefully. Once I start gluing, uh, this this glue here has. Uh, good, good long set time, but I want to be sure that uh, I'm pretty well set and ready to go without any hindrance. Uh, because once I once I do get the glue in there, uh, it'll start it'll start getting a little bit uh, tacky on me and thicker. And the thicker it gets, the the less secure I'll be able to get that joint together. Now I like to use uh, artists. These are these are actually artist uh, brushes. They, these are used for. Uh, they're little paddles, which are very, very springy, and those are those are uh, something I can get right into those cracks and help ease that uh, glue in there and get it on both surfaces. I want to make sure I get glue as far down as I possibly can. Where I can't get it, I can uh, use the uh, compressed air and gently ease it in. I'm not going to be uh, shy about how much glue I use here. I want to I want to really get it in there, uh, and also there's another simple thing you can do which is you can open and close that joint a little bit that will that will suck that glue right down in there there's um, if it runs out the other side all the better I want to have that I want to have that glue joint well well saturated Open and close it. Let that glue gobble it, gobble it right in there. Up front here too. And now the 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 thin cracks are the ones that you want to really attend to because that's where that crack will progress over time. So I say there's no need to worry about being neat here. The idea is you want to get that glue really buttoned into the uh, all those cracks. We can 
clean it up afterwards. And okay, now I can use this uh, artist tool to uh, spread around both sides. It gets right into the crack. It's very, very thin steel. I got a little dangle there. I want that to get in there. Same with up front. I know there's a crack there someplace I want to get it in. Now this waterproof glue has got a slightly thinner nature than uh, standard type bond. Type bond glue is typically a little bit um, thicker. This is a little runnier, which is actually very, very beneficial because it's able to get right in there. And uh, whereas uh, standard type bond is sometimes a little bit difficult to push into a crack. Now I can use this to literally push it in, press it right down into the grain, wherever I think there's a crack. Let it work right in. I can spread those cracks open a little bit. That'll also help. Um, you know, I've got I've got a cutting board that I made back in the uh, early '80s that uh, I glued up with um, maple and uh, this same this same type on waterproof glue. And it's been used on our kitchen cutting uh, cutting things for uh, all those years, nonstop, and uh, it hasn't once failed. Those are all basically the same as this. It's all just nothing but uh, wood that's been glued together along the longitudinal sections of the grain. Now examine very carefully before you start uh, clamping it together. Be sure that you uh, have everything addressed because if you if you have any wood that's out of place, those those joints won't come together. So we'll see what we can do. And again, I'm not worried about glue running out. That's the least of my concern at this point. I want to have good solid contact. I'm going to start right around the in front of the in front of the uh, trigger. That's a good supportive location, and as I say, this this tape can be stretched and pulled as like a bungee cord, and that will really pull that wood together. One the pistol grip where that's you can see where that's squeezing so we'll secure that pistol grip really tightly the same way probably in a couple of locations right here it's a good sign I see uh, I see stuff squeezing out as I'm doing this that's good we've got this long crack right here that this needs to be glue it up also. So I'm going to work this right in. Another one here. And I said make sure you have everything addressed before you tape it up and that's what I mean. Press it right into those joints. It doesn't hurt to splay that open a little bit to let the glue migrate right in there. I like the fact that this doesn't set up too quickly so that it has you have good working time. And it's good and fluid so that it does get in there nice and tightly. So now I want to 
buckle that a few times just to get that glue to get into every bit of that grain as much as I can. Now that particular part right there, I think I might use a uh, mechanical clamp because that's such a that's such a difficult section to pull together. I'm going to use a mechanical clamp on that, but before I do, I've got to secure the wrapping. We're going to go both ways. We're going to secure that. tightly as we can. And make a spot here where I can wrap tape around behind that crack. trying to secure you can see how it's pulling up little beads right here so glue has actually gotten down into that crack which is awesome behind the tang wrap tightly examine here where this is going to be pulled together Okay, here we go. We're going to just pop that right on there. Well, that's beautiful. That just suddenly oozed out. And that's what we want. So we've got it we've got it in both directions. That's going to nicely pull that together. I have one spot here that pulled up. So what I'm going to do is put some glue on that. Work it in with my spatula here, this other spatula. I think I got it that time. I think I got it. Yep. Okay, so now we got to go up front and be sure to get these joints here. I'll work some more glue in here. This one here is ready to go. We'll tape that up. And we'll worry about the uh, cross grain break afterwards. With each increasing wrap, be sure you pull tight and then across the primary section of the crack and then move move along and continue to pull it as tight as you can. This gun was uh, really distressed. While we're waiting for the uh, stock to dry, what I'm going to do is take apart uh, the uh, floor plate here and uh, drop every drop all the small parts and uh, everything else right into the pan here and uh, soak it in mineral spirits paint thinner. Taking apart a floor plate on most Mauser-style military weapons is very simple. Just push this push this pin, the hinge pin, straight through. Very rarely is there any issue with pushing that through. It's just a it's just a friction fit that's held in by the wood itself. And pull the latch back. And that's it. And um, the follower can be dismounted just by lifting up this part of the spring and sliding it out. The same with the the same with the back section. Now take note if there's a difference in the if there's a difference in the uh, springs 
uh, construction. This one here appears to be symmetrical, some are not, so make sure that you know which way it's going to have to go back. This one here is entirely symmetrical, just like a big M. That's actually pretty clean, so I'm not even going to bother putting it in there. So I'll put all the other parts in. It'll get, this will clean off, the mineral spirits will clean off all the uh, dirt, and it will also uh, eat right into that rust. Mineral spirits was invented uh, back in the, uh, I believe it was in the mid-30s, and it was one of the greatest inventions of all. Other countries such as uh, the Axis powers such as Germany and uh, Japan didn't have access to uh, this invention, which uh, really changed the way uh, machinists were able to uh, clean parts up, because uh, up until that time they had to use very volatile uh, fuels such as kerosene and things like that. And kerosene is the base product, uh, which is in um, Hoppy's number nine, which is very effective, but uh, this is better. It, it has, it's, it's designed for the purpose of uh, cleaning. That's what it's designed for. It's not an auxiliary use like uh, kerosene is, which was designed for lamps and for uh, heating. So we'll give those a good brushing. And now I'm not going to, I'm going to leave them sit here for a while, but I'm just going to work in that, uh, work in the mineral spirits. Now paint thinner is a different grade of mineral spirits. It's the same basic substance, but it's refined a little bit differently. Um, they both essentially will do the same thing. Mineral spirits is usually the cheaper of the two. It's already, it's already cutting into uh, that surface rust. And uh, once it's once it's uh, worked in there, I'll let it soak. And all I'm doing with the brush here is just helping remove any surface dirt. It's cleaning up really nicely. I'll return them back to the pot afterwards. You know, so much of the uh, cleaning products online and the cleaning products that you buy in uh, gun stores and everything that for, for gun cleaning is uh, there's no such thing as a gun cleaner um, that's a lot of hocus pocus there's no such thing as gun oil gun grease gun grease gun cleaners there's, all that stuff is nothing but a marketing process for a product which is uh, used for other things and they're oftentimes they're compounds Compound is, anybody who's been in chemistry knows a compound is a mixture of different substances, just a recipe. So again, like I say, you know, there's no such thing as gun grease or gun lubricants. Those are just, uh, when you take any lubricant and put it on a gun, it becomes a gun lubricant. When you put anything that cleans metal on, a, on gun metal, it becomes a gun metal cleaner. But this, if this was my, if this was my uh, grill, it would be a grill cleaner. So, you know, you got to be careful of you got to be careful of marketing. Marketing is just a way to dupe you into buying something that they buy by the uh, by the car load. There. So we're just going to let that. Now here's the uh, here's the you can't see the bottom anymore. That's that's what that's accomplished in just that short period of time. So we return it all with bath. Let it sit. While we're cleaning up things, I'm cleaning up the bolt. Now, <clears throat> Mauser-style bolts, uh, the extractor claw is easily removed. Uh, it only goes off in one direction. Just watch on this side here, The as I turn it, it's going to be inhibited by this section of the bolt right here. But if I turn it in this direction, you notice this race around the side here is engaged by a part of the, the front part of the uh, extractor claw. If I just hold it, support it at the ring where it's, where it's around, where it's around the bolt, support it with my thumb and push it gently up, also pushing the for, forward portion of it, push it up. Now, when it gets up, when it rides up onto the flat section, the uh, non-grooved section where there's no race, just push it, push it straight forward and it will detach 
from the ring right here. So that's really cruddy. And you can see there's the uh, there's the means by which it returns. So putting it back on is just a matter of slipping that back over those two legs, pulling it up over the over the bolt. Be sure you don't overstress that because you can you can definitely over torque it and uh, take the springiness out of it, or you can snap it. A lot of people have snapped bolts on Model 70s and uh, different uh, you know different firearms that have used that same. Uh, controlled feed claw. So it's got the same controlled feed claw that you'll find on a pre-64 or current Winchester Model 70. So a nice design, same as the uh, Mauser 98. So I'll get to cleaning that up and I'll be back. So hopefully what I have accomplished at this point is the securement of the uh, longitudinal cracks in the uh, stock, the uh, ones that go with the grain. Um, once that's, and if that's accomplished, after I take a close look at it, uh, if that's accomplished, which I presume it will be, this is extremely good glue. I've, this glue here is um, uh, stuff I've used for, I've used this stuff for many, many years in cabinet building. Uh, very high grade glue, never fails. Uh, cabinet doors operate forever without ever coming apart. This is, I found, one of the very best ways of uh, securing uh, a stock, even during the uh, process of glass bedding. It's, uh, as I showed in my, demonstrated in my glass bedding videos, or glass bedding so-called, and in reality it's usually very little glass, actually, very little glass is actually used. It's more I mean, epoxy based, sometimes with a fiberglass binder. Now, <clears throat> as you can see here, the uh, long, ugly crack that was in this section of the pistol grip, and this one here also, these are, these are now tightly pulled together. They're no longer, they're no longer splayed apart. There was at least a sixteenth of an inch of, uh, Playing of that wood there. Now I still have the, I still have this lateral crack and this lateral crack which we'll attend to, and um, the rest of it appears to be solid. Now one of the greatest problems was there was a long crack that originated back here at the uh, very rear of the tang, and it went all the way forward uh, to the forward portion. So that entire that entire part of the stock was uh, violated. That is absolutely solid now. There's no, I'm pulling apart on that. There's no, trust me, that, that is, that's more secure now. That, that is more secure along that length than it was originally before the stock was um, split. That wood actually is uh, stronger where it was glued than where it was uh, prior to being glued. So, uh, it's a very effective means of securing that. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do with the this lateral crack right here, if I can get this on video, it's it's hard to it's hard to point out, uh, but this is a this is a bad news crack because it goes all the way through, and it's uh, across the grain. That has to be secured, otherwise the the rifle will have no uh, strength. But as you can see, though, by pulling the pulling the wood together and securing it along the uh, along its axis, it has also brought that it has also brought that crack together so that it's less visible than it was before. So that's that's part of the process right there of um, securing it. And as for the one that goes up here that went across the uh, area of the recoil lug, that has also uh, been substantially uh, strengthened by just strengthening that long uh, crack down the middle. Now as you can see on examination of these cross grain breaks, these are not cracks, these are actual breaks across the grain. Um, there are a couple of things to uh, assess. First of all, whether or not there's enough material there that is still in keeping with uh, the other side, in other words, matching mating mating sides of the grain, 
which there is. Um, in other words, it has good closure. There's no there's no hindrance of virtually closing it up tight the way it was to begin with, as you can see right there. Um, and on the forward portion, you can see the same the same thing is occurring right here. This is uh, I can open that open it and close it. That's a good thing actually because that allows me to get some glue in there. If I look at the top of this, there's some there's actually it's it's almost like some uh, finger jointing of that. That's a that's a good thing which will help uh, strengthen the repair. Now this is not a critical strength area. This is this is something which will help keep the action together, but it's not a critical strength area by any means. So there's no reason I can't uh, insert some glue down in there, work it in, and then uh, clamp it in place. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'll place it inside. I'll place it inside the vise. The uh, the grip inside the vise is padded. And I can bring it up fairly tightly without crushing anything. But to secure it now, if I if I gently push on that, you can see is that that crack will open up quite a bit. I can apply glue down into that crack, just allow it to work its way in, and I'll help force it in with my. Uh, artist tool. This will help force it in also, just brushing this back and forth as I'm squeezing and work it in on both sides. A lot will get in there. The most most important thing is just be patient. This glue does not set up quickly so I can easily take my time and work that in. And I can also manipulate the stock gently back and forth and allow that to basically pull itself in, pump it in, just like that. And as I do that, you can see that the joint dries out a little bit, so I can apply a little bit more until I'm confident that that's pulling in, pumping in glue. Just force it right in, and it will... I love this tool. Great for this. Take your time and be sure that you're confident that you're really saturating that joint with glue. Okay, now I can turn my attention. I'm pretty sure that that's filled up. I can turn my attention to the front side where I can do the same. I'll temporarily move this I'll move this back a little bit so that uh, I can put this inside the. Um, I'll I'll reapply more, but I want to move this back into my vise so I can apply pressure to this front side without. There we go. Now we can. Now we can really apply pressure to that. Might be even better if I might be even better if I rotate it upside down because I think the the greater part of the crack is at the bottom in this side. Okay, working it in as tightly as I can, get that glue into the crack here on the side. I'm pumping it in a little bit. Now, as you can see on this crack that goes across, this uh, cross-grain break here, I'm just opening and closing that joint as I apply glue to the... I can apply it to the top and sides, and just work it in with my little artist steel here. Just work that right in. And I'm opening it and closing it. If you watch, that's pumping right here. That's that's literally pumping that liquid right into that crack. You know, I like to uh, take the mystery out of uh, gun repair. It's not uh, it's not rocket science by any means, and uh, it it sometimes is a lot simpler than some people make it out to be. All I'm 
I'm going to do is apply some gentle pressure. It only needs it only needs a couple of pounds of pressure with this uh, cord here. This is standard twine that uh, you can get any place. Doesn't have to be. Anything. I don't want to use anything too heavily be heavy that will actually you know induce a little bit too much pressure and can cause the uh, cause a breakage. So I'm just going to use twine. Okay, now just I'll apply a little bit of it's going around my table saw. That's as simple as that. Just going around the that's not going to move any. And I'll keep watching that. I'll watch those joints when I'm when I'm convinced that those joints have closed up as tightly as they're going to close. Uh, I'll tie it off. I would say that's about it. Two half hitches, a couple of turns around. That's not going to. That's not going to slide off. I don't want to be too aggressive about cleaning this up because some of that glue will retreat back into that crack, and I don't want it to dry up. So I'll just gently remove the excess, and anything that's near that uh, crack, I'll leave alone so that it can 